Guys, if your visa has been rejected, do not worry. I know you're probably panicking. I know you're not really sure about how to move forward or you may be someone who is worried about, okay, what if my visa gets rejected, right? This video is for all of you guys. I'm gonna tell you exactly how to move forward in this process and exactly why you should not be worried. So first off, if you've done the process alone or with someone else and you believe that there's something that went wrong because of that reason, you can actually go ahead and you can take a look at yamgrad.com services section and the visa application help. Everything that you will basically need regarding a visa process end to end is covered over here, no matter which country you're going for. So you can take a look at that if you'd like to work with me personally or you can connect with me directly using my WhatsApp number, which I'll include in the description of this video. Now, if you're gonna be doing the process all by yourself as well, that's completely okay as well. But I wanna give you a few tips. I wanna tell you exactly how to move forward in this process. This is a really important part of your process and it should not be a showstopper because this is basically the end game. You've done everything to get through and now this is the final part of your process. So the first thing you have to understand is do not panic. Understand that you will be okay. There will be rejections of course, and these happen for various kinds of people, but again, it's probably because of something that you can actually go ahead and fix, right? Because other people are still getting accepted. It's not that the consulates are not accepting anyone at all. So there's probably something that went wrong in your process or something that you said during the interview or something that happened that led to this rejection, right? So we're gonna actually stop that from happening next. And hence, the important thing is that it's not the end of the road. Good things are coming. You need to believe in yourself. If you do not believe in yourself, this process does not work. Point number two is to analyze where you went wrong. What happened this time? What is your best guess that, okay, this must have gone wrong. This must have been the issue, right? You have to actually understand that. Let me give you a couple of examples. The most common reason is usually insufficient ties to your home country. And this is common no matter which country you're going for, whether you're going to study or work or even on a visitor visa at times, you know, if you have insufficient ties to your home country, you can expect a rejection, right? And you actually need to understand that, okay, I did not prove to the officers or maybe to the people evaluating my application that I will be coming back to my own country, which essentially means that they thought that you would settle down in the other country that you're going to, right? and hence they did not grant you the visa. That could be just one of the reasons. It's an example, there could be hundreds of reasons out there, but this is just one example. Other examples include showing unsatisfactory proof of funds. You don't have enough funds to sustain yourself over there, which basically means that you would be a problem for their government. The next thing is incorrect information in the forms, in the forms that you have filled. Now this may be the DS-160, this may be, you know, depending on the country you're going to. For Canada also they have different types of forms, but again it depends on which visa you're going to and then you have to basically, you know, fill out different forms based on the visa you're going through, right? So all of that is going to be important. And finally, lack of preparation for your interview. This could be, you know, or if you're going for Canada, maybe your SOP is not that good, right? You Basically you were not prepared for whatever the officer was going to throw at you or you did not answer their questions or you answered them wrong, right? You mentioned something that is incorrect so that is also another reason but again I'm gonna stop giving you examples over here because I think you get the hang of it there could be many more reasons and hopefully you're able to predict yours at this point of time now again one of the major reasons why I recommend working with us is basically just in case you are not able to figure out the exact reason we've actually worked with 3,000 plus applicants and we can actually tell you that okay this is the exact reason why your visa may have been rejected and essentially you know this is what we need to target for the most part, okay? There may be one or two reasons also, and depending on the case, right? We come across different cases. Some cases are more complicated than the others. But again, basically what I'm trying to say is, yes, there is certainly a reason and you have to figure that out. Point number three is to prepare again. Very important, you guys. It's very important that you understand, okay, this is the this is the part where you have to hit the hammer and then you hit it hard over there. So you've already understood, okay, wh where is the issue, right? Wh what happened wrong last time? What went wrong? Now you have to actually address that. Secondly, not only that, you also have to train yourself for the hard question that they're gonna throw at you, which almost always comes up, is why was your visa rejected the last time? And again, this is a very important question. If you have not prepared for it, probably should get started right now. Okay, remember, there's no limits to the amount of times you can apply for the visa. However, your chances reduce with repeated rejections. So if you've been rejected three or four times, it's gonna be harder to get you an acceptance than someone who's just been rejected one time. Point number four is actually a pretty small point and that is interview, but interview with confidence. If you're going for the US, 
make sure that you're prepared for the interview if you just need help preparing for the interview we also have a service just for that by the way you can go into the services and you'll see over here us visa mock interview where we basically train you again and again and again until you are perfect with the answers so just in case you need something like that you can go for it otherwise if you have people who are already in the us and they know exactly what kind of questions are going to be asked you can actually take help from them remember there's really no issue taking help but yeah prepare for the interview there's no apparent need to be scared you can absolutely do it, but at the same point of time, you have to be prepared and you have to be confident in yourself that yes, I can do it. If you're thinking, okay, I've been rejected three times and this is probably going to be the same outcome when you're walking into the consulate, it's probably going to be the same outcome. So make sure that you are not doing that. And finally, my last recommendation to you, and I hope that you know you will take it positively. I understand this may not be exactly what you may have been looking for when coming to this video, but still have a backup, all right? Some people, are just not able to get through simply because they don't want to invest in that or simply because they don't want to invest in understanding what happened with them or they just don't have the idea of what's going on or they're not able to process when, when the questions are asked. It could be a lot of reasons, right? It could be a lot of things. So it's important that you have a backup at least. I'm not saying leave the United States and you know move to another country, right? But I'm saying that there are a lot of other good places also to work and study nowadays and it's been proven that US while well, it still is one of the top three but there are still some really really good competitors out there with that said if US is the country that is of most importance to you and you have to go over there for some reason right it is still possible all right but please keep in mind that there are other routes as well right for instance you can go to Canada first and then you can basically from there move to uh, to the US right after you get the PR over there in Canada. So again, there's a lot of things that you can actually do with the process over here. You can, you know, basically still get to the country of your choice. But at the same point of time, it, it's going to be a longer route for you. So please don't worry, guys. If you have to get to the country by hook or crook, you will get it. But at the same point of time, there have to be other ways as well. All right. So have a backup just in case things don't work out for you. All right. We don't want you to waste valuable years of your time when you're studying or working and contributing to the economy. There's a lot of good countries that want a lot of good people just like you. And I'm sure that any country will be lucky to have someone like you. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you need any further help, you know where to find us and goodbye and take care for this video. Make sure to subscribe so that you can get more such updates in the near future.